is the Wolds bomb that we've all been waiting for. We haven't got a good Wolds bomb like this in a minute. But Paul George and the 76ers, they agreed to a four-year, $212 million max deal. And the 76ers now got themselves a new big three out in Philly with Joel Embiid, Therese Maxey, Paul George. And they also picked up Kelly Oubre again for a two-year deal for $16 million. So, I mean, this team has been killing it, man. And right off the back, I kind of want to kill all those talks about, oh, Paul George was overpaid and stuff because, no, nah, man, Paul George here, he was worth absolutely every penny that the Philadelphia 76ers paid this man because there's been no legitimate proof of a decline in his game. He's 34 years old right now. He shot the best he's ever shot in his career from the field goal and the three-point line, 47% from the three uh, from the field goal percentage and 41% from the three-point line. He played more games than Therese Maxey. Played more games than Joel Embiid, played more games than Luka Doncic, all while having the same amount of minutes he's maintained over the previous few years. So to me, that looks like a guy who's thriving. And he's clearly still been thriving because he's scoring and getting buckets per usual, averaging 20-something points a game. That, to me, is a guy who is far from a decline. When you shoot the best you've done your entire career, even the years that you were considered an MVP candidate from the three-point line and the regular the field goal percentage, like that is that is crazy. And above all, I mean, just looking on paper, this really might be one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. And I know some concerns there. I have a couple of concerns actually uh, with this Philadelphia team, but this trio, they got stars that are all elite three-level scores. Joel Embiid can score anywhere on the floor. Therese Maxey can score anywhere on the floor. Paul George can clearly score anywhere on the floor. So this allows these guys to work out wherever they're most comfortable on the floor. So if Embiid, he wants to get busy in the paint, that's where he want to work out, that's where he's feeling good, then he can do that. Because you still got some perimeter shooters that are reliable in Paul George, Maxey, Kelly Oubre. If Paul George want to work out in the paint, he can do that. You still got reliable shooters that way. Maxi want to work out in the paint, get to the cup, he can do that. But he can also score from outside, inside, however you want the bucket. Best believe these three guys can give that to you. And either way it goes, whoever does not have the ball in their hand, nine, eight times out of ten, they're a reliable shooter from the perimeter. Because I trust Joel Embiid to knock down some open shots. Kelly Oubre, who's a, 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 a lethal shooter from the outside and proved to be a great role guy who can knock down threes. Paul George shooting the best he's done in his career. Therese Maxey, we've seen a season he had. So I'm loving it, man. Offensively, you're going to be able to keep a lot of different defenses on their toes. And then on a the defensive end, they're still pretty damn good. You cannot count them out because Paul George is a lanky defender and a great defender as well. A lot of people forget that he kind of started off in this league by solidifying himself as an elite defender. So, you know, I, I think this is all around great, man. And looking at matchups, I, you know, I, I kind of put them above the Knicks. I know the Knicks just picked up some great moves this offseason, but I put them above the Knicks because they already had a great series and B wasn't even fully healthy. You got the Celtics there, of course. On paper, Philly might be a little bit better. Celtics have a better bench support on paper, but it, it really just depends on who will play harder, who's coaching better, and, and who's like protecting the ball most, you know, come playoff time and all of that. But above all, Bucks definitely don't have enough co to contend with the Philadelphia 76ers. They need more than just Giannis and Dame if they want to even continue to be a factor in the Eastern Conference. We've seen how all these other teams have boosted up their roster and re-signed guys and brought new pieces to help out the roster, but the Bucs ain't did nothing at all. So that does concern me. And as far as the 76ers, the only thing that I think could be a potential downfall with them is not the injuries because that's going to be the case for any 30 teams in this league, Western Conference, Eastern Conference. It does not matter. It's more so just the bench support. Not convinced that they have enough coming off the bench to help out the starters with scoring. I know they got a couple of key guys that they brought back and that they still have under contract. But above all, Kyle Laurie is a free agent right now. 
Buddy Hill still may go somewhere. Uh, and those two guys are, are key pieces to come off somebody's bench and actually be a factor. I mean, Kyle Lowry's an older guy, but I mean, he's still someone you can rely on in terms of controlling the game in a good way, especially if you're going to count on him playing some defense. So you want to kind of secure that bench support there. And I think that'll help Philly all along. Anyway, look, man, we got some audio here from the 76ers via NBA. Let's do it. <laughs> 